called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land Lord Jesus bless your people reach out to many across the nations of the world I want to thank you my father and my God do what no man can do touch lives transform destinies mend families anoint my lips of clay that as I give interpretation of your word your people can be delivered from the sneer of the fowler your people can be changed and transformed in the name that is above every other name that can be named hallelujah glory be to Jesus before I get into my message I want to thank you for tuning in tonight again but also at the same time I just want you to hit the share button if you are tuning in right now we want to have as many people as possible in the mighty name of Jesus one thing that I have learned in my ministerial life is that in the realms of the spirit distance is not a barrier and those that come to my services they know that anything can happen in my services so we if you are watching me right now, tighten your city belts because we are just about to fly. There is something that is just about to happen in this place. My God, the Bible says, and he sent forth his word and his word delivered them from destruction. I want you to understand as you are seated on the couch, as you are holding your iPad, as you are watching me on the bigger screen, as you are holding your phone, that the glory of God is being transmitted to this studio wherever you are watching me from right now receive the anointing and the dose of the glory of God I want to speak this evening on a message I have given a title the glory realm the glory realm the glory realm ladies and gentlemen the glory of God is the climax of the presence of God the glory of God is beyond gifts of the spirit the glory of God is beyond the power of prayer the glory of God is beyond unctions and anointings and visitations and supernatural encounters the glory realm is a realm which is beyond even the angelic realm the Bible is talking of a man by the name of Solomon. Solomon is a heir apparent to the throne of David. Solomon is a son that David had with a lady by the name of Bathsheba. We all know the story and the controversy that is surrounding the woman by the name of Bathsheba. Bathsheba is a lady that David committed a or of fornication with he killed Uriah because of Bathsheba I don't want to get into the nitty gritties and details of that story because I do believe that many people that are watching me they know this story but ladies and gentlemen that being said David died and the Bible says Solomon was enthroned before the death of David to become the king who sits on the throne in Israel but before he starts his ministration before he starts to function in his office the word of God says he went to the house of God and there he prayed and offered 22,000 burnt offerings and God came down that very night it did not take God time to come and visit Solomon the Bible says that very night God visited that very night God came through to Solomon the Bible says fire came from heaven and the glory of God filled the temple the priest could not minister this is something about the glory of God when the glory of God comes God does not need your strength God does 
does not need your power. God does not need your efforts. Miracles will be taking place on their own. This is a realm that I saw God ushering the church in the last days. For the Bible says the glory of the latter house shall surpass that of the former. The Bible says when God came down, everybody saw the glory of God. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Wherever you are watching me from, I want you to understand that when you enter the glory of God, it is not a dimension you can function and still be sick. It is not a dimension you can function and still be bewitchable. I want you to understand you can hear witches talking and conspiring against you. You will just laugh and cough because you know in the realm that you are operating in, it is a dangerous realm. There are many people that entered the glory realm. One of them was Moses. Moses was a prophet. The Bible says he climbed the mountain to seek the face of God for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says in that mountain, oh my God, the glory of God came upon him. When he descended the mountain, the people could not look at him because the glory of God had rubbed itself upon the life of Moses. I want the glory of God to rub upon your life. I want the glory of God to rub upon your destiny that every place that you enter, God will enter because you cannot separate God and his glory. Where the glory of God is, that's where God is. You can't separate God and his glory. You can't separate God and his glory. You can separate God and his anointing. You can separate God and gifts because the Bible says the gifts and callings of God they are without repentance. Do you know that you can be gifted and still be a sinner? You can be gifted and still be a fornicator. You can be gifted and still be an adulterer. You can be gifted and still be a drunkard. You can be gifted and still be committing masturbation. You can be gifted and still be a liar. You can be gifted and still be a cheater. But you can never carry the glory and also do those things. Because the moment you sin, the glory of God will live your life. Glory be to Jesus. The glory is not a realm that you can operate with sin. It is a realm that is beyond the sins. You can be gifted and operate in sin. But you can never possess the glory. And still operate in sin. Because the moment that you begin to work in sin, the glory of God will live your life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about people falling down. I'm not talking about the presence. I'm not talking about the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing of God is the presence of God entrusted to a human body. That is the anointing. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now even as I minister. But listen to me. The glory of God is God himself. It is God himself. Do you know what happened to Peter? As Peter was fellowshipping with Jesus, the Bible says it came a time whereby Jesus was being crucified and persecuted. The word of God said a small damsel, a small child came and said to Peter, you were with Christ. And he said, I did not know Christ. I don't have anything to do about Christ. But Peter forgot that there is something called the glory. My God. Uh, the Bible says Peter did not see that he was even talking like Jesus. My prayer in this hour is that you may enter into the realm of the glory of God. This is a realm of creation miracles. It is a realm of creative miracles. You don't need a salary to pay rent. You don't need a salary to pay school fees. You don't need a salary to pay your bills. When you enter the glory realm, when you move in the realm of the glory of God, the witches in your family will be frustrated. The witches in your family will be frustrated. I stand to prophesy as an oracle of God on these seven days of glory that the glory of Yahweh may manifest upon your life. By the way, the glory of God is the, is the manifest presence of God. You can never separate God and his glory. The Bible says the children of Israel, they moved by a cloud by day and by a pillar 
of fire by night. What does that mean? It speaks of the glory of God. The cloud it speaks of the Shekinah. The cloud it speaks of the glory. So the children of Israel were moving in the glory realm 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and 365 days in a year. They were in the glory of God 24 7 I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to everybody watching me it is my desire it is my passion that you cease to operate and do things by your own efforts but you switch into the realm of the glory of the almighty God now let us look how the children of Israel were surviving with the glory for 40 years they did not visit a tailor for 40 years they did not see a doctor for 40 years they were not growing weak they were not growing old the Bible says and none of them was barren you cannot be operating in the glory and still be financially barren you cannot enter the realm of glory and still be lacking you cannot enter into the realm of glory and still be poor you cannot enter into the realm of glory and still be begging and borrowing I prophesy today to everyone watching me by way of the internet let the glory of God fill your house let the glory of God fill your business let the glory of God fill your life in the mighty name of Jesus in the book of Acts chapter 9 the Bible talks about a man who was persecuting the church of God the man was causing pandemonium and anarchy his name was called Saul Saul was moving from Jerusalem he was going to Damascus he was on a mission my God he was on a mission to go and kill to go and arrest to go and break the camps of the saints of God but the Bible says on his way a great light shone and he fell down what was that light that light was the glory of God because the Bible says out of the light came the voice of God and the word of God says Jesus spoke unto Saul and that day that moment Saul's life was changed if you want something that can change the life of an individual in an instant it is the glory of God if there is anything that can break the yoke and the chains and the altars of hell it is the glory of God my friend as you watch me I don't know what is in your body I don't know and I don't care what the doctors told you I don't know and I don't care oh what the nganga the sangomas told you I don't know and I don't care which doctors report you are holding in your hands I heard the Bible say which report and whose report shall we believe we shall be in the garden of Gethsemane the Roman soldiers they came to Jesus after prayer ah, and they said we are looking for Jesus and Jesus came and said I am he they could not look into his face they could not look into his eyes the Bible says and they fell down because the glory glory of God was still upon him. Jesus had to make a prayer for God to remove his glory. Listen to me child of God. When you move in the realm of glory, it is a realm of the supernatural. It is a realm of impossibilities. It is a realm of power. It is an unlimited realm. I prophesy. Listen, when you move in the glory realm, you become untouchable, unattackable, unbewitchable, unkillable. In Jesus mighty name I know there are people that predicted your downfall but they don't understand the realms that you are operating in what is a realm a realm is a level a realm is a height a realm is a dimension that you enter into you do you know one thing ah there are two modes of transport ah, I can drive to Jobek or alternatively I can fly to Jobek now when I fly to Jobek, it's more comfortable and it takes a short time for me to reach my destination but when I drive to Jobek ah, I will be moving but at a slower pace am I talking to somebody here now the realm and the dimension of flying it is a dimension that is above the earth there are no port 
portholes in the skies. There are no portholes. There are no corners. There are no car jams in the skies. This is the dimension that I am talking about. When you hear the Bible saying, Ab ran fast and he overtook. Elijah ran fast and he overtook the chariots of Ab. It is because of this dimension of the glory of God. In the dimension of glory, there is what we call supernatural acceleration. In the dimension of glory of a taking is permitted. I don't know who started a ministry before you started yours. I don't know who started business before you started yours. I don't know who started whatever they started before you started. I don't know who got married before you. I don't know who drove a car before you. I don't know who built a house before you. But by the realm of the glory, you are about to overtake. I said you are about to overtake. I said you are about to overtake. I said you are about to overtake. God spoke to Samuel and he said, Samuel, pursue, overtake, recover it all. I don't know where you are watching me from right now, but listen to me. You are the last, but you are becoming the first by the glory of God. There is an acceleration that is coming upon your life. There is an acceleration that is coming upon your destiny. There is an acceleration that is coming upon your family. There is an acceleration that is coming upon your ministry. There is an acceleration that is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Do you know there is a difference? Come on somebody share. I feel the glory right now. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Say the broadcast. Cancer is being healed. Okay, the broadcast. Share the broadcast. You will never lack any good thing in this season. Share the broadcast in the name of Jesus. You will not lack money in your house. You will not lack the blessing in your house. Your children are protected in the hands of God. No coronavirus can enter the glory realm. Yes, no sickness, no cancer, no HIV can enter the glory realm. No tumor can survive the realm of the glory of God. It is a realm of the instance. In the realm of glory, you don't need to pray for something to happen. You just need to think. That's why you hear the Bible saying, for as a man thinketh, so is he. You just think a car and a car comes to your house. You just think about something. May you enter that glory. May you enter that glory. May you enter that glory where no witch and wizard can look you eye to eye, eyeball to eyeball. May you enter that realm. May you enter that realm, that dimension where you move in the epic iso, the shadow of Yahweh, the shadow of Elohim in the mighty name of Jesus. May you enter that realm in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Five people are receiving miracle marriages. Five people are receiving miracle marriages right now. As you are watching me right now, right now, right now. It is a realm of miracles. It is a realm of the supernatural. It is a realm of supernatural occurrences. There is nothing natural about us. The realm, the realm of the glory of God. Now listen to me. When Adam was created by God, when Adam was created by God, he was given the glory. Adam was not wearing clothes. Adam was not wearing a nice suit. Adam was not wearing a good shoe. Adam was putting on the glory of God. Jesus comes as the second Adam. That's why in the book of John chapter 17, you hear Jesus Christ praying and he says, Father, may you give your son the glory that he had at the beginning of the world. You are not hearing what I'm telling you here. Now somebody can ask me, how can Jesus be praying such a prayer? It is because when Jesus went to the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, he took the sins of the world upon him. And the word of God says, at one point he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. My father, my father, why have thou forsaken me? And the word of God now says, oh, somebody may ask as well, and say, Apostle, how can Jesus pray such a prayer, whereby he can say, my father, my father, why has thou forsaken me? How can God forsake his only begotten son? You need to understand.
understand something here. Jesus took the sins of the world upon himself. And so at the cross, Jesus was a sinner. And God cannot look at sin. That's why Jesus had to pray and say, My father, now give me back that glory which I lost on the cross. Because when I went to the cross because of sin, I lost the glory. Now there are two types of Jesus that you need to understand from scripture. There is Jesus of Nazareth who is the son of Joseph and Jesus Christ, the son of God. The word Christ, it means the anointed one, the glorified one. So he began to operate in, uh, in the anointing or the glory realm after being resurrected. That's the reason why he appears in a room where the disciples are hiding. Jesus appears. They are locking their door. But in the realm that he is operating now, he does not need a key for him to enter. No, 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 no. Uh, listen to me, somebody here. Breakthroughs are for babies. I said breakthroughs are for babies. When you mature in the things of God, when you mature in the things of the Spirit of God, you no longer operate by breakthrough. You operate in the realm of the glory of God. You don't need to break the door for you to enter. Jesus was now operating at a higher altitude and at a higher level in the spiritual world. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The size of your mountain is determined by your height in the spirit. The size of your problem is determined by the realm Ah, and the level that you are flying at in the realms of the spirit. Now, what, oh, what do I mean right now? What do I mean right now? Listen to me. When you go to Mount Kilimanjaro, you, it's impossible for you to climb that mountain. It is an impossible mountain. If you go to Mount Everest, it's, it's as huge, it's magnanimous. It's an impossible mountain. But the moment you enter a helicopter, a chopper, or a, or a jet that same mountain becomes as big as your fist the more you go high the more mountains become smaller i don't know any mountain that is in your life i don't know any financial mountain that is bothering your destiny i don't know any financial mountain that is bothering your ministry in this predicament listen to me child of god right now you need to just go higher in the things of god when moses wanted to see god God. When Moses wanted to see the back of God, the Bible says, Jesus said unto Moses, Moses, it's impossible for you to see me, but there is a place up here where you can stand upon a rock. When you stand upon that rock, you are going to see me. I think many of us, we know who this rock is. Jesus is the rock of ages. Ah, he's the rock upon we stand. So for, for Moses to see the glory of God, he was supposed to see the glory of God standing upon Jesus. All other ground is sinking sand. There is only one area where you can stand for you to see the kabod, the Shekinah of God. That place is called the rock called Jesus, who is the rock of Jubota. I am praying for you as you are watching me. I am praying for you as you are tuning in. I am praying for you. Let the glory of God move in your life, in your destiny. In the name of Jesus, the children of Israel, their shoes, they were wearing convertible shoes. The shoes were growing together with the legs. The shoes were not worn out. The clothes were not tearing apart. Why? Because they were under the shadow. They were under the glory of God. That's why David wrote in the book of Psalms, and he says in Psalm chapter 91 and verse number 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is
is my refuge. David found something in the presence of God which is called the glory of the living God. Listen to me. The dimension of glory is above witchcraft. They can go to Mtata. They can go any way they can go and collect any muti. It cannot touch your life because you are hiding in the glory of God. You live in the glory of God. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Ah, he says a thousand shall fall on your side. Ten thousand at your right hand side. But it shall not come near thee. Because you have made the Lord God your refuge. You have made Elohim your dwelling place. I'm here to speak to people right now by way of the internet. During this pandemic, I know one antidote against this virus. It is called the glory of God. The Shekinah. The Kabod. The manifest presence of God. I have never known any individual who entered the glory and came back natural and came back and lost a battle. Solomon entered the glory as an ordinary man. But when he came out of the presence, he had extraordinary wisdom. I prophesy to businessmen that are watching me right now. Do you want to be a strategic, prophetic, precise, accurate businessman, entrepreneur? Then enter the dimension of the glory of God. In the glory realm, oh my God, you don't miss your target. In the glory realm, it moves through thought waves and thought patterns. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says when Saul, who became the king of Israel, entered the realm of the glory, he began to prophesy. And there was an idiom saying, is Saul also among the prophets? I don't know who's watching me. There are many things whereby people have said you can never do. There are many things whereby people said you can never achieve. It is impossible before you enter the glory. It is impossible before the glory of God touches your life. But the moment you break into the glory of God, impossibility becomes possibility. I stand to prophesy. There is a man, a woman, a boy, a girl standing in front of a mountain. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a release. Let there be a migration of the glory of God over the airwaves. In the name of Jesus, no power, no demon, no force can survive this anointing that you are receiving right now by way of the airwaves, by way of the internet. In Jesus' mighty name. Impossible for you to enter the realm of glory and come back ordinary. Ah, the glory of God is the lifter of men. Do you want to rise beyond any, any level in your family? Then go for the glory of God. That's why David prayed a prayer and he said, Oh Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit. Take not thy presence away from me. Uh, you cannot equate, you cannot compare the glory and money, the glory and a car. You cannot compare the glory and the material things of this world. You cannot compare the glory of God and the things of this world, silver and gold, bronze. You can't. That's why Peter the apostle, he said to the men that was seated by the get. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The glory of God will cause you to live a life of miracles. Listen to me, when you enter the dimension the glory, there are miracles they cease to be miracles. Miracles became daily occurrences. The children of Israel, for instance, they ate the bread of angels. They ate the manna which was the bread of angels. Why? Because they were moving in the glory of God. I know companies are closed. I know businesses are closed. Churches are closed. Banks. A lot of systems are grounded. But there is still a place where things can happen when the whole world is shut. Heaven is not shut. Heaven is not closed. Heaven is not shut. Child of God, listen to me right now. Heaven is not shut. The glory of God can move towards your life. 
I really feel right now as you are watching this broadcast, the Lord is telling me there is supernatural provision that is taking place. Supernatural provision that is taking place. Listen to me. There is a man who comes to our church. A man who comes to our church. He was owing 300,000 to the municipality. 300,000 to the municipality. And we, he entered a certain service and he sowed a seed in that service because of the glory of God that was there. When the statement from the municipality came, it was on zero. I'm talking about zero, zero, zero. The glory cleared any debt. I don't know about anybody that is in a debt, any kind of debt that you are into. Receive the anointing of miracle debt cancellation in the mighty name of Jesus. There is another one, is our elder. 49,000 was wiped in the name of Jesus Christ. What are you talking about? The glory of God knows no boundary. The glory of God knows no possibility. The glory of God knows no boundary. I don't know what is bothering your life, but let the presence of God hit your life like a caterpillar without breaks. Let the anointing come to your life and descend upon your destiny like a caterpillar without breaks right now in the name of Jesus. Let the glory, let your children encounter the glory of God. The Bible says in the, in the Old Testament, they took the rod of Aaron and they placed it in the ark of the covenant. They took the rod of Aaron and placed it into the into a place into the presence of God. The ark, the, the ark, the ark. The Bible says the following day they went to the very same place and it took the rod of Aaron. But behold, there were flowers on the rod of Aaron. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, on the rod of Aaron there were almonds. These are fruits overnight. 24 hours. What took some people 10 years? It shall take you 10 days. What took some people 40 years? It shall take you 4 years. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. What took some people forever? Ay, ay, ay. You, when you are moving in the realm of the glory, you are not limited. There is no roadblock in your life. Have you ever seen a president passing? Even if the roadblock is red, he enters through the same roadblock. Why? Because the, the realm that he operates in is not limited to traffic lights. I am preaching right now to somebody in this season that is dry, in this season that is hard, in this season that is impossible. I prophesy, I decree, and I declare encounter the glory of God. Counter the glory of God. Counter the glory of God. That's why a man called Isaac, he sowed a seed. He sowed a seed. The Bible says Isaac sowed a seed in a famine. And God gave him a hundred times more. There was a great drought in the earth. There was a great drought in the land. Isaac took a seed. And he sowed a seed in that land. And God gave him 100 times more. My God. My God. He had a revelation that where I am right now, there may be a drought in the earth, but there is a realm that I live where dead things can come alive. Uh, do, do you know something? When the Bible talks in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 that the end of God was upon Ezekiel and the, the end of God took him in a valley of dry bones, it is not talking about a physical valley. It is not talking about, uh, uh, you know, physical bones. It is talking about a vision, a trance that happened. God took Ezekiel from the world that he was used to. And he took Ezekiel into a vision. Into the spirit. And in the spirit he saw bones in the valley. Now if you go to Israel right now, board an aeroplane 
And you say, I want to go to that valley whereby Ezekiel went. There is no such a valley on the geographical map of Israel. No such a valley. It was there in the spirit. Sometimes God must fix your things first in the spirit before he comes to your natural. Let God fix your dry bones in the spirit first before he comes into your natural. I don't know who I am talking to right now. I don't know who I am talking to right now. But this dimension, it is a, a very realistic dimension. The Bible says, for all he have sinned and they have fallen short of the glory of God. Are you listening to this? For all we have sinned and they have fallen short of the glory of God. So this, is, this tells us what transpired in the Garden of Eden. I, I want you to know which man is normal can tell an elephant to come and kneel down and tell the elephant, your name is elephant, and the elephant just goes, obeying. Which men can live in the same place with lions and not be devoured? Which men can live in the same place with, with the devil and not die? That was the glory which was upon Adam, the, Adam the first man. He was existing in a realm of glory. That's why Adam never became a baby. Adam never wore pampas. Adam never ate serelac. He was just created big. <laughs> Have you ever heard people telling you, uh, you see, in life you must start small and struggle and it depends on the, when the glory realm comes. <laughs> when the realm of glory envelops your life. My brother, ask Jonah. Jonah was in a desert. Read the book of Jonah. The sun in the desert was scorching him. It was too hot. And he prayed a prayer to God. The Bible says, and a tree grew up from the ground at that moment. How many years do you need for a tree to grow up? When the glory of God comes, it, it breaks all natural and scientific protocols for things to happen. What we need in the world today, it is the glory of God. I wish I'm talking to someone. You will not move in the same pace with your brothers and sisters. You won't. You won't. If your brother took 50 years to buy his first car, let me prophesy in the eyes of this camera, as you are watching me right now, right now, right now, you will not spend the same time which they spent for them to be where they are. L listen, listen to this prophecy right now, right now. Listen to me, listen, listen. Please share this broadcast. Listen to me right now. Your father's maximum shall be your minimum. Your mother's maximum shall be your minimum. Why? Because we have entered into the realm of glory. Oh God. So the Bible says, all you have sinned and they have fallen short of the glory of God. They fell. They fell. There was a world which they were living in. And because of sin, they fell. They were in a certain world, but because of sin, after Adam sinned, Adam fell from a certain dimension, from a certain realm. This is the reason now, after he has sinned, Adam, after Adam has sinned, uh, somebody shared this broadcast. How many people are sharing? How many people are sharing? How many people are sharing? If you have shared the broadcast, just, tell, just type shared. Now, after Adam has sinned, he now discovers that I am naked. Did the devil or the serpent take clothes from Adam? Where did you keep your, your clothes, dear Adam? If you were bathing, go and check in the bathroom. This man called Adam was not wearing anything. 
since the day that he was created. But now after a certain event has taken place, Adam is discovering that I am naked. The world that Adam was living, he did not need clothes. He needed the glory. He was wearing the glory of God. So when you wear the glory of God, no, 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 listen, we want to go deep here. Please share the broadcast. Look at me and please type if you are hearing. Let's interact. Let's interact. Let's interact. Let's interact. Now, 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 now. Jesus, <laughs> after Jesus Christ huh, resurrected from the dead, before that on the cross, the Bible says the Jew, the Roman soldiers, they threw some lots and they began to strip him naked on the cross. And one of his disciples by the name of Joseph of Arimathea, he covered the nakedness of Christ. He went and he bought fine linen and he covered them, him in, in that linen, covered his body and took the body of Christ into his tomb. Covered him in fine expensive clothes. But after Jesus resurrected from the dead, the Bible says he took those same clothes and he put them neatly together in the tomb. Jesus, what are you doing? So if you remove these clothes, what are you going to wear? Jesus was saying, in the realm that I am right now, I no longer need this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Jesus was saying, he was sending a message to the disciples. That you can take these clothes, but in the realm that I am now living, the glory realm, I don't need this material. Because it is expensive to you, Joseph of Arimathea. It is expensive to you, Peter. But where I am right now, which is the realm of glory, I don't, this is the cheapest material. Ah. So Jesus cannot resurrect and be naked at the same time. I am talking about a presence, a dimension that can address your physical and your spiritual needs at the same time. This revival is not only there to address your spiritual needs, but let your physical needs be met in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody get ready right now. Get ready, get ready. Get ready, I feel it. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Something is about to happen. Get ready, something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. When we tell you buy data, be on your internet, be on your TV, be on your computer, we know what we are talking about. There is a realm we operate where distance is not a barrier. When we tell you share the broadcast, when we tell, when we tell you follow us on the internet as we preach, we know, we know, we know. Every day my phone rings, I pray for people across the nations of the world. Without touching them, demons will be crying out without touching them cancers will be healed without touching them lives will be transformed ladies and gentlemen we know what we have we know what we carry we know the power that is within us wherever you are right now i feel it this thing is over me right now i feel the anointing right now it is about to touch someone in the name of Jesus, this realm is a supernatural realm, the glory realm. The, the Bible says the priest could not minister because, 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 because of the glory. Ah, they have loved at you for a very long time. They have looked down upon you for a very long time. But not after tonight. Not after tonight. Not after tonight. Not, what is the confidence of Jesus? Jesus, they are giving him uh, five loaves and two fishes. And he does not pray a fire prayer. Uh -uh. He just lifts the basket. The Bible says, and he gave 
gave thanks. He did not pray a violent prayer. He just gave thanks to God. Where is the confidence of Christ? He knows the glory. He knows, he knows, he knows. I am praying, I am praying, I am praying. I am praying for the glory in your house. When the glory descends, that fridge will never be empty. When the glory of God descends, you can never move in lack, in borrowing and in desperation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the glory of God is coming upon you. It's so heavy. During this time, do not confess negative things. Speak the word of God. There is nothing that activates the glory as the presence or as the word of the living God. Wherever you are, you must release your word. Speak the word of God. Decree and declare, I am blessed. I am lifted. I am heavily defended. No harm, no power, no virus, no pandemic shall be formed against me and it shall prosper because I know the realm that I operate in. It is a realm of the glory of the living God. Ladies and gentlemen, this realm when it comes, when I am ministering the word of God, missing body parts will appear. Missing body parts will appear. Missing body parts will appear. I have seen miracles, but I have also seen the glory. I have seen wonders, but I have seen the glory. I have seen power, but I have seen the glory. Listen, there is something that is better than power. That thing is called the glory of God. Do you want to move in miracles? Go for the glory. Do you want to live a life that is a divine immune system? Go for the glory. Do you want to rise from rags to riches, from grass to grace, from zero to hero? Go for the glory. The glory of God is the lifter of men. The glory of God is a story changer. The glory of God can move of nobody's to be somebody's. That's why Jesus was called Jesus of Nazareth. Ah, uh, uh, Philip asked Nathaniel. Nathaniel asked Philip, and he said, "Can anything good come out of Nazareth?" The Bible says, "He shall come out of the ground like a tender shoot on a dry ground." You you cannot limit a person who is a career of the glory of God. You cannot limit a woman who is a career of the glory of God. You cannot limit a business which carries the glory of the almighty God. I, uh, I prophesy to some people that are watching me right now by internet. Even as I am about to close, I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. They said you have cancer. They said you can't be married. They said you can't buy a house. They said you can't buy a car. Yes. Yes, it can only happen outside the periphery of the glory of God. But now that you are in Christ, the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, the old is gone. I prophesy, welcome to a world of divine reality, of divine manifestation, of supernatural acceleration. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you shall start the journey with Ab, but you shall arrive arrive before Ab arrives. This is what I declare by the power in the glory of God. You are about to arrive before Ab arrives. You are about to have what nobody has ever had in your family. You are about to achieve and acquire what has never been acquired. This is why the Bible says what an eye has not seen, what an ear has not heard, neither has it been entered into the minds of men that things which God has prepared for them that love God. Oh, come on, lift up your hands and pray. Shaka Bahai. Oh, Rabba Baba. Ah, Shatalaba. Wherever you are, wherever you are right now, lift up your hands and pray. Shanda da da ba 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 I see angels. I see angels moving in your room, in your house. As you are watching me, please let someone take you pictures because I see manifestations are taking place. Whatever you took in your dreams, there is someone watching me. Something, something moves in your lower abdomen. Receive your healing and your miracle in Jesus' name. Rondo Boshende de Bekate. Aida Kosten Veira Endo Kosten.
Aiden Vai, Aiden Mosta, Aiden Shatalamande, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Your presence is here. I feel it. I feel it. I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God. Now listen to me before I close the broadcast. My time is running out right now before I close the broadcast. I want you to take a special seed, a special offering and connect to this word, connect to this anointing. Listen, sometimes you must act decisively. Sometimes you must act there and there. Sometimes you must act at that time. The presence of God is moving right now, right now. We want to give our offerings. There are details that are on the screen right now. I'm praying for everyone that is releasing a seed seed in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for everyone. I'm praying for everyone. I'm praying for everyone that is supporting the work of God. Plant a seed for your business. Plant a seed for your marriage. Plant a seed for your family. Plant a seed for your life in Jesus name. Like never before if there ever is a time that you need to give. It's now. Now do it. Don't hesitate. Do it. Don't hesitate. Do it. Don't hesitate. The Bible says as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall never end. Listen to me. Never compare never try to understand the things of God in the natural. In this season the Bible says a prophet by the name of Elijah, he went to the woman uh, the widow of Zarephath and he said give me that last flower that last bread. It was in a famine, it was in a hard season my goodness me, it was in a drought, a three year drought. But the woman the widow lived and survived when others were dying why? Because she obeyed prophetic instruction do it right now those that are outside of south africa you can connect via paypal you can connect via paypal and as you do that make sure you inbox the proof of payment because i want to pray for you i want to mention your name before my god do it right now in the name of jesus do it right now in jesus mighty name those of you that need prayer and one-on-one -on -one, there are also numbers that are appearing on that screen right now please get in touch with us i will be ready to pray for you and prophesy over your life you see my face i prophesy in jesus mighty name you can book for one-on-one -on -one. you can book to see the prophet to receive prayer from the man of god in jesus mighty name i pray glory 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 ah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you now listen to me tomorrow we are here again same time seven to eight I will be having a word. I'll be praying and prophesying to your life. Invite someone. Tomorrow I do believe ah, it's going to be serious. It's going to be serious. The presence of God is going to move in a great and mighty way. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in once again. If you are there before I close the broadcast, you say, Apostle, I want to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Oh, erase my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. I confess with my heart. I believe in my heart and confess in my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, is the son of the living God. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, you are saved. In Jesus' name. Get in touch with us and God bless you. Meet you tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen.